Good evening. I'll just uh, blabber here for a minute until I see there's a few people coming on. There are a couple of announcements I want to uh, make you aware of. <clears throat> we talked about them a little bit this morning, uh, but we're going to uh, go through them quickly again this evening. Uh, next Sunday, the uh, uh, service, uh, Lord willing, if everything goes according to plan, uh, the uh, service will come live onto your Facebook feed uh, starting at about 10.50. <clears throat> and uh, uh, we're trusting that that will be the same for uh, YouTube as well. Uh, and so uh, please make that a matter of prayer, if you would, this week, that we would be able to see that come together. Um, the actual program, all the recordings have come together into a movie of sorts, uh, a uh, complete video presentation, but now it is getting it to come uh, live onto your feed at the appropriate time next weekend. Uh, so that is uh, next Sunday, uh, 10.50 a.m. Uh, and uh, let me remind you again that we are still asking for um, testimonies. Uh, and let me just take a quick look at how many I've got. Oh, none. Uh, so that means that you have a job this week. Uh, that uh, you need to sit down and either type up, email me, write it out, drop it by my place, put it between the doors, uh, whatever you can, but we're looking for some testimonies. Uh, it'll be a very short evening next Sunday evening uh, if we don't get some that come in. And let me encourage you, there's got to be something going on in your life right now that uh, is a blessing, something that God is teaching you, something that you would like to share with others that can encourage them. Uh, let me just share a little something with you. Uh, it has nothing to do with the message, but uh, these are a couple of uh, quotes, or a quote and a little verse that I came across uh, that I thought was quite uh, profound. The first one is from uh, a book written by Charles Stanley called The Blessing of Brokenness. And uh, Charles Stanley makes the observation, not all change is marked by or results in growth, but all growth is marked by change. And uh, hopefully we're continuing to grow even in this time of self-isolation. Uh, the other is a little verse written by Hudson Taylor. Uh, missionary to China uh, years and years ago, and Hudson Taylor wrote this, <clears throat> Bear not a single care thyself. One is too much for thee. The work is mine and mine alone, thy work to rest in me. And that indeed is our responsibility and our task, is to rest in him and to allow him to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. So the next Sunday, 1050, the morning service will start. Uh, also testimonies, if you can email me your testimony, that would be awesome. Uh, remembering the Mars, remembering the Bowermans, and remembering Pauline Kasebeck in prayer uh, during these difficult days. Uh, I did get an email this afternoon. Um, not a testimony, but I got an email, uh, and uh, the lackeys are asking that uh, we make everyone aware that next weekend, uh, the Sight and Sound Theater is putting the play Jesus. It will be streamed live or streamed free all weekend long next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the 10th through the 12th, and uh, that will be on the Trinity Broadcasting Network. So there's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can go and you can download the TBN app uh, onto your device, whether it be your tablet or your smartphone, or you can go directly to the Trinity Broadcasting Network website and uh, you can stream it through their website. 
Uh, but that is pretty much any time you wish to look at it or watch it next weekend, uh, the 10th through the 12th. Uh, also, uh, I've become aware that next, uh, the 10th, uh, which I believe is Good Friday, uh, that uh, there will be a live concert put on on, on TBN as well uh, that will feature, uh, let's see who, Chris Tomlin will be on. Matt Mayer uh, and Max Licato will be preaching. And so that is eight o'clock uh, Friday evening. And so we encourage you, if you're looking for something uh, wholesome and edifying to, uh, to tune into, that that would be a good uh, alternative to some of the other things. Uh, so remember Sight and Sound next weekend, anytime you wish to watch it through the website, or through the TBN app on your device. All right, I think that's all of our announcements. Uh, and uh, you haven't forgotten about the testimonies, have you? Mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're still waiting for some testimonies. Did I mention that? I can't remember. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm hoping that uh, you'll do that. And if God's not doing something in your life, you need to be looking at your relationship with him because even in a time like this, God should be doing something and there should be something going on, something that he's teaching you, something that he's impressing upon you, something that is precious, a verse that's just jumped off the page that, that you're holding on to during this time. And so I encourage you to do that, to sit down and think through what is it that God is doing in my life right now? What can I give him thanks and praise for? All right, we are returning to Psalm 63 tonight. I'm going to read the entire psalm uh, for you, but we're going to be concentrating once again uh, on the first verse or two. Uh, and so I, I hope that you're not getting tired of this, but uh, there is so much in here that is applicable uh, to us in any time in our lives, but especially at a time that we're in. So let me read Psalm 63, and then we'll have a word of prayer. David writes, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Every one that sweareth by him shall glory, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Let's pray. Father, as we come before you tonight, we thank you for the pages of Scripture. We thank you for the promises of Scripture. We thank you for precious passages such as Psalm 63 that seem to mean so much more as we go through the valley and the desert ourselves. And so I pray tonight that you may help us in these few moments that we would glean from your word truths that are necessary to keep us going in the week to come. Father, we have no idea how long this uh, circumstance will last, but we know that you're aware and we know that you are in control. And so I pray that you'd help us to keep our focus on you. Help us, Father, to cling to your word, to truly get as close to you as we possibly can during this time. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
We've been talking a lot over the last year about uh, getting close to God, uh, about seeking after Him, about uh, truly having a heart that longs for God. Uh, and we've been looking at Psalm 63 now for several weeks and under the, the main topic of developing a heart for God. Uh, and we've seen several things as we've gone through this psalm so far. But we read what David has penned here during a difficult time in his life. What we're going through right now uh, is difficult for most of us. We're having a challenge, uh, accepting the fact that we're supposed to stay isolated and at home. Uh, and we look out our window and we see that there are many people that are not abiding by that, that are going about their business. I read somewhere this week that somebody said that they, fe they felt like they were in kindergarten and that all the other kids are misbehaving and your recess keeps getting interrupted and taken away because of the other's behavior. Uh, and that could be very well true uh, as we look at the fact that there are people all over the place seem to be doing what they want. But what we're going through is really nothing compared to what David went through uh, in this psalm as he writes this psalm. He is uh, on the backside of the desert. We've seen that already. He is running in fear of his life from his own son, Absalom. We know that, that uh, David has no idea how long this is going to last. We know that David uh, has made himself as comfortable as he possibly can in the desert. But as we come to this psalm tonight, <clears throat> do the words of David really resonate with us. What he longs for, is it really what we long for? When David says, uh, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Can we really, as we read that, say, that is my heart's cry. I want Jesus more than I want anything else in my life. Most of us would say that we hunger to know him more intimately, uh, to have the same thirst for God that David did. That's, that's our heart's desire. That's, that's what we really long for. But when all else is removed, and, and this, this question is something that I've struggled with all week this week, when everything else is removed and there's nothing else, is he enough? When we have nothing else left of our normal routines, our normal schedule, the normal things that occupy our time and our attention, is he really enough? Uh, in a time like this, when all that we've been comfortable with for so long, everything that we've been familiar with is suddenly and unexpectedly taken away from us, do we still desire him alone? Or do we long for the way it used to be so much that we feel badly for ourselves in this time. I hope and pray that, that that question will really stick in our minds and that we will think on it uh, throughout the course of this week and be honest with ourselves. Because if you're anything like me, you can fool yourself pretty easily. You can come up with all sorts of reasons uh, why that you can't do certain things or, uh, you know, excuses for the way we behave or the way we think. But this is a perfect time for us to be totally 100% honest 
with ourselves before God. Do I really desire Him more than I desire the way things used to be? I've thought much this week on that question, and I've thought as, I, as, I've, if I, as I've gone over that question in my own mind, I've thought of the words to the song, The Heart of Worship. And I want to read the words to you. I'm not going to sing them for you tonight, so don't go asking. But I want to read the words to you because I think there is a powerful message in them. It says, When the music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come, Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. Uh, that's a good question. Is he enough? Is he all that we long for? This evening, we're going to talk a little bit about the desert. Not the literal desert, but the desert periods of our lives where we find ourselves removed from things that are comfortable, where we find ourselves going through the valley, whether it's a matter of uh, a mistake that we've made, whether it's because of decisions that other people have made, whether it is in fact completely out of our hands, similar to this period that we're going through right now. When an unseen virus has basically shut the world down, we have no control over this period in the desert. Uh, some of you may be in that desert season or that wilderness tonight, and it has nothing to do with COVID-19. It may be because of family or financial crisis. It may be a health problem that you're facing that no one is aware of at this period of time. Maybe it's a leadership crisis and everything that you've worked so hard for is suddenly up in the air and seems to be withering on the vine. Maybe you're in a season when your heart has turned cold. Maybe you're in a period where you are feeling so far away from God and that so many things in your life that were once those things you held on to have been taken away. Maybe you're angry with God. Maybe you are struggling with self-pity and self-doubt. Whatever it may be, whatever the reason is that you find yourself tonight on the backside of the desert, I want you to notice a few things from David tonight that I think are exceptionally important for us to take note of. But before we do that, let me just read this passage of scripture to you from a couple of different translations. I want to read it to you from the English Standard Version. David says in the ESV, O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. The Amplified Bible renders it this way. O God, you are my God. With deepest longing, I will seek you. My soul, my life, my very self thirst for you. My flesh longs and sighs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. A dry and weary land where there is no water. You thirst and you long for God. Does that sound familiar? Tonight, as you sit in quarantine or self-isolation, as we sit in our homes, as we've been told to do, we are figuratively in the desert. It may not be the Sahara. 
It may not be Death Valley. It may not be anything like what we would think of when we think of a desert. But yet we are in a desert period of our lives. You know, we all go through it, <clears throat> right? I mean, when you think about it, we all go through the desert. We all go through periods of trials and testing, every single one of us without exception. And some people go through the desert and through those trials and testing. And when they come out the other side, they are miserable, they're cantankerous, they're angry, they're bitter. And then you can have a completely different person go through the same set of circumstances and still be able to retain a smile on their face and still be able to sing the praises of God and come through the other side stronger than when they went in. Why is that? How is that? How can two people venture basically into the same circumstances? Well, we're going to try to look at some of that tonight. We have three questions that we want to answer. Uh, and I'm going to basically, uh, the, the three questions are this. How did I get here? Number two, what am I supposed to do in this desert? And then number three, when am I going to get out of here? Well, the last question is basically the easiest one to answer, so I'm going to deal with that one first. And you're not going to like the answer. The very simple answer is, I have no idea. I have no idea when we're going to get out of here. I talked to a pastor this afternoon who said that he'd be surprised if we are able to meet and have services before June. Some say that it could be July. The government saying that we could have certain restrictions for the next 18 months or more. Whatever it is, we need to take this time and use it constructively however we can to reach people with the good news of the gospel that Jesus Christ loves them and died for them and that they can have a relationship with him and the certainty and promise of heaven through a relationship with Jesus Christ, not through a church. So when are we gonna get, going to get out of here? Uh, I have no idea. That's the simple answer. That's the difficult answer. And I know that none of us really want to hear that. God leads us into a desert oftentimes for specific reasons, and we may not fully understand those reasons this side of glory, but we know that he is in control and that he knows the beginning from the end. I want you to notice something. If you have your Bible there at Psalm 63, I want you to look at what David writes. <coughs> Excuse me. David says in verses 1 through 4, I'm just going to read verses 1 through 4. He says, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus, Will I bless thee while I live? I will lift up my hands in thy name. I want you to notice something tonight that had totally escaped me until this week. And that is what we don't see in these passages, in these verses of Scripture. In the midst of everything being turned upside down, in the midst of the fact that David has been forced out of his palace, that David is on the backside of the desert, removed from all of the comforts that's, that he's familiar with, running in fear of his life from his own son Absalom. What we don't see in this passage is David crying out to God and saying, Lord, right this wrong. We don't see David crying out and say, Lord, restore to me my kingdom. We don't see David crying out and praying to God and saying, Woe is me, look how hard I have it. We don't see David even crying for water. 
He's already said that he's in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, and he's not praying and asking God to give him water. Why? Because David is so enraptured with the presence of God. He is so consumed with God himself that all the other physical needs of his life have gone into the background and are no longer important to him. David's heart and mind is consumed with the things of God. It is totally focused on God and on the worship of God. So the first question is, when am I going to get out of here? And the answer is, we have no idea. David didn't know. David had no clue how long he was going to be on the backside of the desert, but yet he used that time to worship God. He used that time to focus on God, to adjust his heart, to truly spend time, quality time, in the presence of Jehovah God. So the second question is, how did I get here? Well, uh, through no doing of our own, we are in this situation without having done anything to the best of our knowledge to deserve being here. But we know that God is sovereign. We know that God is providential. We know that God knows the beginning from the end and that he has a purpose in all things. Romans 8.28 as we quote it so frequently and so flippantly many times, for all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. If we believe that verse, then we have to believe that God has a reason for this current situation and that God is going to use it for our good and for his glory. So how did I get here? Well, you know what? Uh, when we look at David, David really did nothing to earn a trip to the desert. David did nothing to uh, have his son seek to kill him. But yet David finds himself in a similar but yet different situation than we are. God has led him to the backside of the desert. All that is familiar to David is gone. All that's familiar to us is kind of a memory at this moment in time as well. You know, when you think about how busy we have become in our lives, and you think about the fact that, that we have talked about seeking after God and, and wanting more of Him, but the excuse so often that we used, and I'm as guilty of it as anyone else, the excuse we use so often was, you know, I'm just so busy. I'm just so busy. Uh, and now things have changed. And now things have totally shifted so that we're not that busy. And we have time to spend with him, to spend in his word. In order to answer the question, the how question, let me ask you this question. Does it really matter how you got here? On the surface, it matters. But ultimately, when we're in the desert, we need to examine ourselves. So did God place you here because of some sin issue in your life? Well, that's a question that only we can answer individually. Did life circumstances lead us to the desert? Yes, as a matter of fact, they did. Through no doing of our own, we have found ourselves in a state of emergency. Did we place ourselves here? No, not by a long shot. None of us would, for the most part, seek to spend our weeks on end sitting in our home without any outings, without any interaction with each other. Did God place us here to teach us something? Well, I hope that's a question that we'll be able to answer in the coming weeks. And that's one of the reasons I've asked for testimonies for next Sunday evening, 
so that we can all benefit from maybe the lessons that we're learning as we go through this period together. The end result of each question is the same. What are you going to do while you are here? What did David do while he was on the backside of the desert? David spent his time worshiping God. He spent his time focused on the things of God. You see, the starting point comes in our relationship with Jesus Christ, if we have one. We spend this time listening to what God is saying to us through His Word and through His Holy Spirit. We spend this time memorizing Scripture. We spend this time meditating on the things of God and focusing our attention on Him in Him alone. David here, his life is on the line. The most powerful king in the world at that time has found himself in a completely unfamiliar area. But notice how he refers to God. In verse 1, he says, O God, thou art my God. There is a personal, vibrant, and vital relationship that exists between David and God. The third question we need to answer is, what am I supposed to do while I'm in the desert? The first line of this psalm illustrates the deep yearning of David. And it wasn't for water, it wasn't for comfort, it wasn't for his own bed, it wasn't for his servants to look after him. His, the longing of his heart was for God. It was to worship God above all else. Oh God, it's a cry that each of us needs to be able to make. It is a place of starting for each and every one of us. It's a call from the depths of our soul, reaching out to God. And sure, I'm not saying it's wrong for us to be praying and asking God to deliver us from this COVID-19 virus. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I want you to understand is in the midst of this self-isolation, in the midst of this lockdown, if you will, in the midst of this fact where the church is unable to gather together, we can still use this time constructively. We can still be growing during this time. We can still be moving forward in our maturity with Christ if we will allow ourselves to. Oh God, are the first words of our spiritual formation. They come from a desire of the heart. They are directed outside of ourselves. They can be said with desperation. They can be said with anger. They can be said with calmness. Or they can be said with frustration. But David here is crying out from the depths of his soul, seeking after God above all else. O oh God, thou art my God. Can you say that tonight? Can you truly, from the depths of your heart, say, O oh God, you are my God. I seek after you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you above all else. Even above my normal routines, even above the things that I'm comfortable with, the things that I'm familiar with, God, I long for you above all of those things. To say you are my God means that I agree that God deserves not just my cries of desperation, but also my will and my heart. In Psalm, 1, Psalm 16, verse 2, David captures this perfectly. When he says, I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. Apart from God, you and I have nothing. And that's been reinforced to us over the last few weeks. Everything that we're familiar with has been laid aside. And now, is God enough? Is he enough to meet your needs tonight? 
without all of the trappings of our lives prior to this epidemic, is God enough? Are we content in Him? Are we happy in our walk and relationship with Him? And if not, then this is a perfect time for us to examine that and for us to spend some time readjusting our hearts and our lives. By the end of the psalm, David expresses his confidence that there is a loving, just, and active God who not only hears him, but is worthy of his trust and his complete confidence. So while we wait, while we wait and while we endure this, these difficult days, let's do a few things. Number one, let's seek his face. Let's cry out to God. Let's turn our lives completely over to him and seek his face as never before. Number two, listen for his voice. You know, we are told in scripture that it is a still small voice that God speaks with. That inner prompting of the Holy Spirit or through the pages of scripture itself that God speaks to us. And so I would encourage you to listen for his voice. Thirdly, examine your heart, your life, and your priorities. Is God a piece of your life or is he the center of your life? Is he a small portion or is he truly the one that you hunger and thirst after? And number four, as we come to the answer of some of those other things, we need to humble ourselves. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. How are things in our relationship with him tonight? Is there a hunger and thirst in our hearts and lives for the things of God? Are we longing for him more than we're longing for the way things used to be? Folks, I hope and pray that we are. And I hope and pray that we can echo the words of David when he says, Thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. You know, we serve a God that is still on the throne tonight. A God that is able to do everything. That is awesome beyond our ability to comprehend. And this virus has not caught him by surprise. He is not at all twiddling his thumbs and anxious over what will happen. He knows the beginning from the end. And so as we wait for this pandemic to pass, I believe it's a great time for us to be seeking to grow in our faith, in our walk with God, in our love for him, in our hunger for the word, that we can come out the other side of this as brighter lights, as deeper Christians, as people who have a renewed passion and hunger for the things of God. That's my prayer for you as we move forward and as we go through these next several weeks that God will use it to truly change us, to change our priorities, to refocus our hearts on Him and Him alone. Let's pray, and then I'll just close off with a couple of comments. Father, you are a wonderful God. We love you tonight, and we are thankful for your grace and your mercy that's been extended to us. We thank you for the love of God that compelled you to send your only son to this world to die on a cruel Roman cross 
to shed his blood as a remission of sin, as a payment for sin. Father, we are told in Scripture that we are saved by faith, by grace through faith. And so I pray tonight that if there are any watching that do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, there's never been a point in time where they have trusted him by faith. Lord, may that take place even tonight. May they trust the one who is ever living, the one who holds tomorrow in his hands. And Father, I pray that you would use this time in each of our lives to become real to us, to center us, to focus us, to realign our priorities. And we'll be sure to give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a need tonight, if there's something that we can be praying about with you, if there are questions you have, if you'd like to have a Bible or you'd like someone to uh, send you some materials, or if you'd like to talk to someone more about trusting Jesus Christ and knowing him as your personal Savior, I'd encourage you to please reach out to us. Our email addresses are either office at goldenharvestministries.com or pastor at goldenharvestministries.com. Or you can reach us by a phone number. Uh, the office number is 289 969 0114. And we would ask for you to make contact with us this week. If you have a need, please make us aware of it. If, if you're stuck at home and you need groceries, if you need someone to run an errand for you, please let us know. We'd love to be able to minister to you and, and serve you during this difficult time. We love you and we are so grateful that God has given us this time. Next Sunday morning at 10.50, we will be live with some music uh, before we have our Easter Sunday message. And so we're looking forward to it. Uh, remember us in prayer this week that all of the technology will come together and everything will work. And uh, pray for each other. Check on each other. Make sure that uh, there's no one that's going unnoticed during this difficult times. We love you. We pray God's blessing upon you. We'll talk to you later. Bye for now.